Hey everybody, and welcome to the Bull Ring. I'm Alan Dietz. Glad to be here with you. Of course, alongside the talented Jess Ballard. And Jess, we have got a great show today. We're going to talk to Ben Rowe. We're going to talk to Mike Herman Jr. Yes. Chris Fisher Spotter, for those of you that don't know. Uh, we're going to talk to Jesse Switzer about his big act win at White Mountain. John Boland getting back to Victory Lane and showed me the money. And we're going to be joined by Zach Evans, too. Unfortunately, uh, we got that bad news about Marty Ward this past weekend. And, uh, you know, Zach and I were talking about it. And wherever you are in racing, you got state and regional legends and, and things of that nature. And and uh, Marty Ward definitely was one of those guys. And I think, you know, we did it a few years ago with David Rogers. I think when you have the opportunity, the unfortunate opportunity, you know, it's mm-hmm. it's good to remember these guys and what made them legends. Yeah, and, and the impact that they've left on the sport. Yeah, no doubt about it. And uh, we do send our thoughts and prayers out to Marty Ward's uh, friends, family, and fans. When we come back, we will break down this past weekend here on Racing America. SRI Performance and Stock Car Steel are your all-inclusive motorsports warehouses with more than 450 product lines. They have everything to put you in victory lane, from professional racing to street performance. SRI and Stock Car Steel have you covered with leading brands, as well as a large selection of steel, aluminum, and plastics. With locations in North Carolina and Indiana, access has never been easier. SRI has the world's largest inventory of used parts. SRI Performance in Stock Car Steel and Aluminum, your one-stop shops for everything racing. Mobile International Speedway will be back in action on Saturday night, August 12th with Back to School Night for Kids. Children 11 and under are free in the grandstand. And kids will get to ride in race cars. Plus, we'll have great racing action with Pro Late Models, Trucks, Sportsman, Pure Stocks, Crown Stocks, and Legacy Stocks. Mobile International Speedway, Saturday night, August 12th. Welcome to Raceface Digital Collectible Cards. Are you a driver or a team looking to expand your brand? Want to connect with your fans, give sponsors more exposure, and earn income from all card sales? Then Raceface Digital has you covered. Digitize your brand with five different collectible cards. Enrollment is now open to all drivers and all series. Visit racefacedigital.com today and use invite code RA1. I'm Greg Ives, and you're watching Racing America. Glad to have you back here with us on Racing America. And as always, we try to figure out a good way to segue into what we're doing next. So what better way than... The highlights. The highlights. Let's check them out. Racing across America. We'll start Thursday with the SRX at Berlin Raceway up in Michigan. Ryan Newman and home state favorite Brad Keselowski on the front row for the feature. Keselowski gains the early advantage. Just past halfway, four-time Indianapolis 500 winner Elio Castroneves makes the move on Keselowski for the lead. 32 laps to go. Last week's winner, Kyle Busch, takes second from Keselowski. Important because six laps later, frankly, Elio didn't have any tires left. And Busch easily moved by on the outside for the lead. Kyle Busch moves away from there, leads the rest of the way to make it two for two in the Camping World SRX Series. Friday night, five flags. We love the sportsman division. The last time we saw Maddox slang him here, he was flying through the air at Mobile, right? That's right. Well, he's he, back. Yeah, and he wasted little time at the start going to the bottom, moving into second right off the bat. Ten laps later, Langham and BJ Latham able to move by leader Chad Robinson. Great battle for the lead throughout the race with Latham finally able to move by Langham for the lead with six laps to go. Latham holds on the rest of the way to score the win over Langham. Saturday, Act Super Late Models at White Mountain for the Milton Cat Midsummer Classic 250. Ryan Olson and Tanner Woodard on the front row. Just past lap 100, Jimmy Hebert in the Black 58 takes the lead from Kyle Biotti and is followed by Tanner Woodard. 56 laps to go, the 03 of Derek Luchaki out front, but he gets spun off the front bumper of Gabe Brown. 
collected Woodard. All those drivers went to the back. Now the zero Scott Dragon in the lead, but gets passed by Jesse Switzer with 53 laps to go. Switzer leads the rest of the way to take his first act late model win. Saturday, the Show Me the Money series was at Montgomery. Twin 70s for the pro late models. Josh Hicks in the yellow car. John Bowling on the front row for race two. Following a restart, Bowling moves by Hicks for the lead, but Hicks gives him a pop in turn three. That means he hit him in the back. Okay. Bowling stays out front, though. Long battle for second between the 43 of Augie Grill and race one winner Hunter Robbins. Robbins finally able to move by after several laps of side-by-side -side racing. After a long win, the Strout Bowl and the two-time Show Me the Money champion takes a dominant win over Robbins and Dawson Sutton. Saturday, the APC United late models were at Sauble Speedway. 72 of Junior Farley and the 97 of Blair Wicket on the front row. Following a restart, the 22 of Kyle Steckley muscles his way into the lead from the outside. Josh Stoddy in the 17 gets into Steckley in turn three. He finds himself in the spin cycle. That means he spun. And the next turn after contact from the 54, Danny Benedict. With that and up against a curfew, you remember curfew. I remember. The race is called and Steckley is declared the winner. Sunday, Oxford Plains Speedway passed super late models, 150 laps. In the 60th, Tim Brackett able to get the advantage over Curtis Gary at the start. But Gary soon takes command. Caution free in the leaders in heavy lap traffic. The five of Ben Rowe works to the outside and passes the seven of Gary for the lead. Only caution of the day waves with 34 laps to go for the stalled car of Dennis Spencer Jr. From there, Rowe holds off Max Cookson for the win, joining his dad Mike Rowe, who won on Saturday night at Oxford to make it a family sweep for the former Oxford 250 winners. Also at Oxford Plains, past Modifieds racing, Colby Benjamin jumps out of the early lead over Dan Brown at the drop of the green flag. Cars get stacked up in the middle of the field, resorting in the 09 of Silas Ripley and others spinning. A few laps later, cars at the tail of the field collide and collect the 52 of Benjamin. Tough break for him. Chandler Harrison in the 85 now lead, but Brandon Barney in the one makes the move on the bottom to take the top spot. Barney pulls away from there to take the win over Harrison and Ryan Hewins. And Sunday, the Elite Super 8 or Elite 8 Super Late Models at Slinger. Alan Kowicki Memorial 77. KDDP drivers current and former on the front row as the 23 of Levon Vandergeest moves past the 17 of Grant Griesbach. 51 of Steve April from well back in the field takes the lead from Vandergeest on a late restart. Vanergy stays right on the bumper of April throughout the rest of the race, but April holds him off for the win. And that's the highlights. And that's the highlights. We don't have any time to waste, so when we come back, we'll talk to past Oxford winner, Ben Rudd. Five Star Bodies, the most advanced bodies on the market. Aerodynamically engineered. Manufactured from the highest grade and lightest weight materials. Tested tough for optimum performance. The highest quality and most durable products you'll find anywhere. Our products help racers around the world reach victory lane. Winning never looked so good. Faster, lighter, stronger, better. Five star. What creates a winning combination? Quality, focus, discipline, and most importantly, speed. At Pepper Jack Kennels, we provide exceptional water and land training services for hardworking retrievers. From leading in the field to leading on the track, together we establish winning dogs and a winning team. Devoted to retrievers and motorsports, we are Pepper Jack Kennels. Visit us online to learn more. Super Late Models return to Crisp Motorsports Park Saturday, August 19th for the Georgia Summer Nationals. Come see the best Super Late Models in the country. Rates for $10,000 to win as part of the ASA Southern Super Series. Plus racing in local divisions. It's the Georgia Summer Nationals Saturday, August 19th at Crisp Motorsports Park in Cordell. For more information, go to southernsuperseries.com. Catch it only on Racing America. Hi, I'm Ben Rowe, and you're watching Racing America.
Welcome back to the Bull Ring. Again, we want to thank our friends at SRI sponsoring today's show. And on the poll, the man who won the past 150 at Oxford Plains on Sunday afternoon, that is Ben Rowe. And Ben, congratulations. What a weekend for you and your family. And um, to get back into Victory Lane at Oxford in August, the timing couldn't be any better. Yeah, it absolutely is. Um, that's kind of what everybody gears up for is, is for the big race at the end of the month. Um, you want to be hitting your, hitting your, your marks uh, this time of year. So, it, uh, yeah, it's definitely paying off. I feel like we, we ask, you know, a lot of the drivers with the Blizzard races heading into Pensacola, um, how much of their notebook are they actually able to translate to the Snowball Derby but with the race being so close, I would think that you can actually take a lot from these laps and apply it to the 250. Yeah, especially now because they move. The race used to be in July, so the track was hot, and you know, in Maine, sometimes it's the temperature would cool down. But usually in August this time of year, it's it's everything stays the same, you know. So, um, especially only being two or three weeks away, so it's a uh, the track temp, the track, you know, the phases it's going through, you can kind of relate because um, uh, it's only a couple weeks away. Um, your dad won the race Saturday night, the 50 lap or the super late model race. And for those that, that don't know, Mike Rowe, three time Oxford 250 winner, I think that's the seventh or eighth decade he's won at Oxford in. He won his first race there in 1969. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. But more importantly (laughs) for you guys, uh, this is kind of the culmination of of the battle with cancer that he has been dealing with. Yeah, absolutely. Um, That's kind of why I stepped back in the last year. I just um, just had enough of uh, every weekend racing and, seeing what he was going through. So I stepped back and then, uh, he was kind of stepping out of the car. So I got in his deal and kind of, and had fun with it and just, uh, just to do a few races. So then he ended up driving this year for somebody else and his car was available. So, so I kind of slid right into his, uh, and, and having a lot of fun doing it. I feel like there's no better feeling when you're going through something like that. Um, you know, a medical issue or, or whatever it is where it kind of derails your life. Nothing feels better than getting back to what your family knows and obviously what you guys have been doing for decades. And it getting back to that sense of normalcy, like, oh, we're back to doing what we love. And then what better way, you know, for both of you guys to be finding your way into victory lane, that's just got to feel amazing. Yeah, I mean, it was... Yeah, it's like I said, I'm not very usually emotional, but we've had, uh, I had two aunts pass away in the past month. A uh, good friend of mine growing up, Seth Holbrook, works on a lot of race guys. He's been dealing with a lot of issues. So everything, they say stuff happens for a reason. And then uh, him winning Saturday night um, was beyond what we can even dream of, you know. And then for me to go out and do it Sunday, it's like everything has to line up. Um, and it just works in, in weird ways sometimes. I know Jess asked you about, you know, how this race in particular can transfer into what you're going to do in the 250. You know, it had a long green run, which a lot of super late model races at, um, at Oxford do. You had some really good cars up there. Uh, Curtis Gary, yourself, Travis Benjamin, Max Cookson, who's been so good this year. What do you feel like what you had is the setup, or do you still feel like there might be a little bit to tweak on? Uh, I think we're pretty close. If we can get everything right, um, cross our T's, dot our I's, and and show up there for the weekend, I think we're going to be pretty close. This is, like I said, this is the one you kind of want to win. It's it's the last big race before the 250. Um, you know, basically all the good cars were there. There's going to be, there'll be, you know, eight or 10 outsiders that, that are going to come in, but for the most part, everybody was there. So, so you can kind of stack up against them, but we're not going to change a whole lot as the weekend goes through, um, and then get into the 250. And then once the day comes that day, then you can just fine tune on it, which, which makes a, a huge difference. 
Well, congratulations. It was a heck of a weekend. Um, we look forward to being back at Oxford the end of August here and, uh, wish you the best of luck in the two fifty. Thank you. I appreciate it. Take care. Thanks, man. That's Ben Rowe winner on Sunday afternoon at Oxford. And, and as we said, that was just a culmination of so many he's a, Yeah, he's absolutely right. We've been talking about this, I feel like, the last few weeks, how basically the stars have to align during a race for in these late model races to win. But the stars have to align in, in outside of racing and all these these other categories for for a weekend like that yeah. that's really awesome yeah it definitely was and you know what else has been awesome rfk racing here over the last couple of weeks in the nascar cup series when we come back we'll hear from car owner brad keselowski who will be joined by mike herman jr to tell us how he spotted chris busher's victory on monday afternoon ready to take your brand to the next level at victory lane design we can help if you are looking for a professional website, cutting edge logo, a hero card that separates you from the pack, or video production to keep you connected with your fans, then check out VictoryLaneDesign.com where winning counts. HMS Motorsport is the leader in motorsport safety, providing the most advanced driver safety products to NASCAR, IndyCar, Sprint Cars, and Sports Cars drivers. From grassroots to professional racers, HMS Motorsport has over 25 years experience outfitting drivers with the best gear on the market. Equipped with first-hand product knowledge, our experts are ready to help you select the best harness belts, seats, head restraints, helmets, and racing attire for your type of racing. HMS is even the exclusive importer for Schrode belts, Schubert helmets, and Valero base layers. Visit one of our stores in Mooresville, North Carolina, or Danvers, Massachusetts. Or check us online at hmsmotorsport.com, where you can learn the details of our products and order online. Safety starts here. Well, Oxford 250 returns to Oxford Plain Speedway with three big days of racing, August 25th through the 27th. See North America's best short trackers battle for a chance at $50,000 on Sunday, August 27th. Plus, racing for the ACT late models, New England Super Modifieds, and more. It's the 50th annual Oxford 250, August 25th through the 27th. And you can see it all on Racing America. Uh, for me, I mean, I started racing on short tracks at Irwindale Speedway, and I ran with Tim Huddleston in late model stocks, and got a good start to you know where you know how to race on short tracks, and going to the bull ring in Las Vegas, and just you, know, you learn how to beat and bang, and how to how to work around guys. significant differences in the tracks and you know I, I when we sat down and I think looked at the next three weeks ahead of us two weeks ago I would have said that we'll run okay at Richmond top five top ten and, and we'll come to Michigan and we'll, we'll you know we'll probably run 10th to 15th given how Kansas and some of these other mountain halves have gone and then we'll go to India and be very very strong um, and so uh, I'm you know tickled to death that we're as strong as we were this weekend and last weekend and uh, looking for big things in Indy off that momentum. And I know Chris is one of the best road course drivers uh, in the series. And uh, last year he probably deserved to win that race and, and caught some terrible breaks. But uh, he's going to have a heck of a shot next week, and uh, I'm, I'm happy for him. Welcome back. And the road to the Cup just continues this weekend at the Brickyard at Indianapolis Motor Speedway on the road course. But we had to get through Michigan first. It took two days to do it. Yes. But it was but well. We did. <laughs> yes. And it was well worth it for the RFK racing team. And Chris Busher making it two in a row joining us now. His spotter, Mike Herman Jr. And Mike, man, uh, congratulations. I mean, there's so many things that, that come out of this win for you guys. How big is it going back to back now? Well, it's, it's unbelievable, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, our thought process was like when we were trying to point our way into the into the playoffs that, you know, we just – if we could get through Richmond and Michigan and get to the road courses, get to Daytona, uh, we were going to be in good shape. And then 
Um, we knew we, we've run good at Richmond in the past. We had a shot to win the um, summer race there last year, and we knew we would be strong. And then we go there and we back that up and, and knock off a win. And then we go to Michigan and, and, and all of a sudden execute the way we did and win another one. It just changes the narrative. So it's been big for us. Yeah. And, you know, you guys weren't starting from scratch, brand new team, but definitely, you know, new ownership. It, it does shift and you kind of are, you know, starting fresh in a lot of ways. And I think every team has that moment where, okay, we're like, things are getting going. We're, we're, we're where we want to be. Things are starting to click. Would you say that? I mean, I would say that you guys are obviously there at this point. Yeah, you know, and I've I've obviously I've been here at Roush for a long time. Uh, I came here in 2014, so um, you know I've seen the last 10 years of of how things have went and and the way it's progressed and the work that's been put into. And then when then when BK come in and it changed to RFK, uh, it's been need to be part of that process over the last uh, year and a half. Just the way I had been with Roush for for a long time, but all of a sudden it starts firing on all eight cylinders and everybody's. Uh, uh, pulling a rope in the same direction and, you know, and then the results start paying off. And, you know, we just have always prided ourselves on a 17 car to to execute, you know, executing the races. And and even with Chris, that goes back to our time in Xfinity together on the on the 60 Xfinity car. It's just, you know, make sure we execute the races. And then when it's we have the, our opportunity where we have fast cars to to try to win races, then we can pull them off. So from the outside, we, we know the change. Brad Keselowski buys into the team um, and becomes one of the owners. What what internally do you feel like changed the most that, that has obviously shifted where this team was a couple of years ago to where it is now? You know, it's just really a reset, um, you know, um, Brad come in and, and brought a whole new fresh mindset. Uh, you probably a different way of, of thinking, but he really just, uh, you know, gives everybody the tools and the resources that we need to, to do our individual jobs, um, you know, and, 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 and just come in and just change the culture, you know, and it's not that the culture was bad that the way, the way it was before. It's just that it was, you know, time to evolve, time to change. Uh, you know, but Jack, he's here today. So Jack's still very much involved. So it's kind of a blend, uh, between the, uh, old school way of, uh, Roush racing versus, uh, you know, Brad coming in with his fresh modern philosophy. So then when you put the two together, cause we still, you know, we use things that we've learned back, you know, years ago to, to apply to days like yesterday. And then, you know, also new technologies and the way you use them is applied as well. And it just, uh, uh, just gives you the tools for success. Yeah. You mentioned spotting in Xfinity, and you also mentioned being with this organization, you know, prior to the change in in ownership, Racing America just launched Racer Jobs, which is a platform, you know, for folks who want to work in the racing industry to find opportunities. What, tell us what your path has been like to get to this point. And Mike, we need to, we need to, the compact version <laughs> of this yeah. because it could take a while. Yeah. I mean, uh, mine's like a book, you know, <laughs> I mean, I, I've been racing nonstop since 1983. Uh, you know, everybody knows my dad worked with Earnhardt from 76 to 86. Uh, I've heard all the stories from my go-kart racing and then, you know, my short track racing through, you know, late mile stock car and the Hooters pro cup series. And then, and then at, at Bowman gray racing modifieds, and it just kind of was a, you know, a natural progression for me. Uh, as far as new guys today, it's still really the same path. I mean, the spotter, um, you know, role is is still, you know, it's still evolving. So a guy can still go short track racing, uh, working with uh, a local team and, and to learn the trade and uh, learn what it takes to, to, to be a spotter at the highest levels. And now you've got all the tools and resources to be able to hear you know, and, and watch how I do things, you know, you can listen to all my communications through the NASCAR app, uh, you know, and, uh, there's audio video and, uh, just, there's so much that you can do to, to try to get yourself, you know, ready to do it. And, and there's a, there's a young group of guys now that, you know, they start out basically doing, you know, ARCA and, and second, third spot. And like this weekend coming up at Indy's a big weekend for, 
the guys that's trying to make their way because they'll be the second and third spotters and and uh, at the road courses here in, in Watkins Glen and and that's how you get your path to to getting to to where I'm at. With the way the areas and everything, and we know how you know dominant Truex was yesterday. Um, how much? How much do you, did you need to tell Chris where to to put the car, or or does that new camera in the back give him a little bit more information as far as where to put the car to take the the air off the nose of the car behind? You know, I know that yesterday on the TV broadcast, it was definitely a narrative uh, that was brought up about the camera. But, um, you know, you're still making a left-hand turn at 180 mile an hour, getting in at a corner and that camera shooting straight out the back. Um, and you have to be able to predict what line he's going to run uh, really before you see it. Uh, so that that camera cannot be – is not going to replace the right human being uh, given the right information. Uh, Chris made every move that that I told him to make to to cover the 19 yesterday. Um, you, you're never going to be able to to make up for that experience that uh, somebody like myself has earned over the years. I've watched uh, Truex race for the past 10 years. I worked, I spotted for Truex in 2013, so uh, being able to know what what these drivers are going to do and be able to try to predict that. Uh, the camera just can't do all that, so you're never going to replace what a spotter does and that in that situation and and plus two you're still having you know I was, I was pushing Chris to make max pace we still had to make lap time that still comes down to hitting your marks um you're not going to be able to do that at a place like Michigan if you're if you're constantly staring at that camera uh you know so if you got got the right guy up on the roof and I feel like I am that for the 17 that if I'm given the right information he doesn't even have to look at the camera he can just keep digging forward and and hit his marks and make sure we're making lap time well, I agree. I think you're one of the best in the business, and I think you guys are going to be awful tough here in these last 12 races or so. Uh, congratulations. I know you're going to enjoy it. I know you know how hard these wins are to come by, and I thank you for putting uh, aside a little time for us today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on anytime. All right. That's Mike Herman Jr. coming off that big win at Michigan with RFK. When we come back, Zach Evans is going to join us, tell us a little bit about Marty Ward's life and time. What creates a winning combination? Quality, focus, discipline, and most importantly, speed. At Pepper Jack Kennels, we provide exceptional water and land training services for hardworking retrievers. From leading in the field to leading on the track, together we establish winning dogs and a winning team. Devoted to retrievers and motorsports, we are Pepper Jack Kennels. Visit us online to learn more. SRI Performance and Stock Car Steel are your all-inclusive motorsports warehouses with more than 450 product lines. They have everything to put you in victory lane, from professional racing to street performance. SRI and Stock Car Steel have you covered with leading brands, as well as a large selection of steel, aluminum, and plastics. With locations in North Carolina and Indiana, access has never been easier. SRI has the world's largest inventory of used parts. SRI Performance in Stock Car Steel and Aluminum, your one-stop shops for everything racing. Super Late Models return to Crisp Motorsports Park Saturday, August 19th for the Georgia Summer Nationals. Come see the best Super Late Models in the country. Race for $10,000 to win as part of the ASA Southern Super Series. Plus racing in local divisions. It's the Georgia Summer Nationals Saturday, August 19th at Chris Motorsports Park in Cordell. For more information, go to southernsuperseries.com. Catch it only on Racing America. Welcome to the new home for race fans, Racing America. Live short track racing. Exclusive team content. <laughs> Any NASCAR fan is really a short track fan at heart. Behind the scenes access. From grassroots to NASCAR, join us at the home for race fans everywhere. Racing America, it's in our DNA. Welcome back to the Bull Ring, presented by SRI. I'm Alan Dietz, of course, Jess Ballard with us, and now we're being joined by Racing America's Zach Evans. And 
Uh, we're usually really happy to see Zach, but in this case today, it's a little, uh, it's a little melancholy because, uh, we're, we're talking about Marty Ward and his life. Of course, uh, for those that don't know, he, uh, was racing at Anderson motor speedway in uh, South Carolina Saturday night and, uh, had a heart issue in the Southeast super truck race and unfortunately passed away. And I don't think you can underestimate what a big name Marty Ward is in the Southeast, but especially the upstate of South Carolina. Definitely, especially like you say, in the upstate region of South Carolina, one of those heroes of the short track world, a uh, six-time champion at Greenville Pickens Speedway, a guy who had won races in UARA, in the Hooters Pro Cup Series, which is probably where some people might remember his name most, is from racing with Hooters Pro Cup there in the late 90s. Um, all that, pro, I think he ran some all pro ran, races. Won some of the in the old NASCAR sportsman yeah. division that short lived series in the early nineties. He won like seven races in that series. Yep. Just a very accomplished racer and was still winning races. I mean, he had won in the Southeast Super Truck earlier this year. Uh, won Saturday night in the the uh, basically a vintage stock mm -hmm. car race. Um, so still getting the job done. But you know that's. Uh, like you say, just a terrible, terrible um, incident we had, and obviously uh, thinking about uh, his friends and family still. Yeah, and I really appreciate you coming on the show and just even off the show, you are such a wealth of knowledge. I didn't even know the sport existed until 2015, What was it you called Zach on the car show? Probably a nerd. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I, Let's break it up a little bit. But truly, um, you see these names over and over again on banners and on trophies and in, and you know, on the wall at Greenville Peak. Yes. On the walls right. and and you know when we do our um, recaps of the the best of whatever races and mm -hmm. and there's all these names and it's like oh man if you didn't grow up in the sport it's really hard to totally like know everything and it's always impressed me how like zach knows everything he knows everyone and i think it's really important to and you know all their stats and i think it's really important to you know new race fans to to have people like you that can like educate them on who these people were because maybe you know their 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 heyday was a while ago but they leave a massive impact on the sport still Right. I mean, these these are the people, you know, that kind of, and we kind of saw a little bit of that with the Pro Cup throwback deal a couple of weeks ago at Hickory with the Cars Tour. Right? Which he actually took a, a car painted like yes. his old Pro Cup car yes. to yes. the throwback it, race. It, correct. Exactly. There was that 97 at, at, the, at the event. And I think a lot of those guys got celebrated in that event you know the bobby gills and the the, the clay rogers clay rogers and, and guys like that that younger fans probably don't really know a lot about them because let's be honest at this point the peak of hooters pro cup was 20 years ago 20 25 years ago yeah. at this point a lot of the guys racing in the car store right now weren't alive yeah you know just was barely alive so you know it's it uh, unfortunately sometimes it comes under bad circumstances like this but um, anytime we get a chance to celebrate that past and that legacy and and where we came from as a sport i think we have to take the time to do that unfortunately it's not the circumstances we'd want right now and i but, don't i don't know if you saw it or not but if i'm not mistaken i don't know if it's this weekend or in the next week or two uh anderson is already uh, changed one of their yes. upcoming events to a Marty Ward Memorial. Yes, they, they've they, they've uh, renamed a, a I believe it's a limited late mall race mm -hmm. they have coming up to the uh, uh, Marty Ward ninety seven and and obviously that'll be a very very important event. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that that want to be a part of that and, and try to win that race. Well, um, I know it's a, it's a it was a shock to the racing world mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, you know, to his family and friends, um, and fans, because, you know, growing up, especially as kids, or even as you get older, um, 
these guys are always your heroes. Absolutely. And, uh, and we just send our thoughts and our prayers out to, to everyone. And, um, and Marty Ward definitely left a mark and it's a mark that, uh, we plan to always remember. So again, Godspeed Marty Ward. Welcome to the new home for race fans, racing America. Live short track racing. Exclusive team content. <laughs> Any NASCAR fan is really a short track fan at heart. Behind the scenes access. From grassroots to NASCAR, join us at the home for race fans everywhere. Racing America, it's in our DNA. SRI Performance and Stock Car Steel are your all-inclusive motorsports warehouses with more than 450 product lines. They have everything to put you in victory lane, from professional racing to street performance. SRI and Stock Car Steel have you covered with leading brands, as well as a large selection of steel, aluminum, and plastics. With locations in North Carolina and Indiana, access has never been easier. SRI has the world's largest inventory of used parts. SRI Performance in Stock Car Steel and Aluminum, your one-stop shops for everything racing. Super Late Models return to Crisp Motorsports Park Saturday, August 19th for the Georgia Summer Nationals. Come see the best Super Late Models in the country. Rates for $10,000 to win as part of the ASA Southern Super Series. Plus racing in local divisions. It's the Georgia Summer Nationals Saturday, August 19th at Chris Motorsports Park in Cordell. For more information, go to southernsuperseries.com. Catch it only on Racing America. What creates a winning combination? Quality, focus, discipline, and most importantly, speed. At Pepper Jack Kennels, we provide exceptional water and land training services for hardworking retrievers. From leading in the field to leading on the track, Together, we establish winning dogs and a winning team. Devoted to retrievers and motorsports, we are Pepper Jack Kennels. Visit us online to learn more. You're watching Racing America. Welcome back to the Bull Ring, presented by SRI. Alan and Jess, or Jess and Alan here with you, however you look at it. This afternoon, of course, uh, our lucky dog this week, coming off a big win in the Milton Camp Midsummer Classic 250 at White Mountain Motorsports Park for the American Canadian Tour Late Models. Joining us on the phone now is Jesse Switzer. And Jesse, if I'm not mistaken, this is your first career act win, right? Yes, it is. Wow. Uh, it couldn't come in a much bigger race. I mean, one of the biggest races of the year. Uh, just tell me a little bit about how it feels to, to finally get that first win and to get it in this race. Uh, it, it was, it was insane. Honestly. Um, I haven't even really put it into words yet. What it, what it means. And I haven't even really honestly, like believe it. <laughs> I keep waking up every day and, thinking to myself yeah I, I did win an act race yeah um and the I've, dream I've been, the dream continues now because you're going to get to talk to jess <laughs> <laughs> it punched yeah. your ticket onto the bull ring <laughs> all right yeah that, this is pretty cool thanks for having me <laughs> well i uh to piggyback off of what alan said um can I'm you do that I'm going to try. <laughs> i'm looking uh, at social here and you have such a great photo with I'm assuming all your friends and family with the car and the trophy um, after the race. And I just love photos like this where it's a big group photo because you can tell that all of these people are just as excited as you are. And it's been a long time coming for them, too. So who do you have with you here? Oh, yeah. So that's that's exactly what it is. It's it's all friends, close friends, uh, a lot of family. Um you know, my, my wife and my three kids, um, this, this is what we, this is what we live for. We, we eat, sleep. And even when we're at work we're we're still thinking of our next race. So, um, and, you know, the rest of the guys, um, are, you know, all really close friends or been, been friends, lifelong friends. And, 
it was it's really cool um we our group has been together probably two years as far as you know racing together and uh what we've been to, able to accomplish in the last you know two years is pretty incredible and uh last year i was stoked to finish second in this race um after just running white mountain regular races all year and uh I, I really wanted to to win an ACT race. That was my goal uh, this spring, but we also cut down our schedule this year uh, to spend some more time with family and be able to enjoy some other things in life. And uh, it, it's incredible that we were able to capture a win uh, on a limited schedule and um, to have everybody there, you know, that supported me the last couple of years and, you know, besides my close family that's been with me um, from the get-go back when I started racing in 2007 or 8. Uh, it, was, it was really cool, and to see their excitement um, meant a lot to me and made me feel like I gave something back to them after supporting me for so many years through the bad and and the good. You know, this racetrack is, is so tough, and this is such a tough race, 250 laps at White Mountain. You've got pit strategy. What for you was proved to be the winning strategy? My guys just made a made a great call to to pit early. Um, you know, we set our goals small at the beginning of the day. You know, to make the race, um, and it took us three tries to do that. Um, and then just every time we came back off the racetrack um, after practice, you know, same same goal. We got it. We got to get in the show back in my mind i wanted to believe that it didn't really matter where you started <clears throat> but then you look you look at the guys who are already qualified with big pluses in their qualifier you know it still makes you think a little bit like are they just going to check out you know we're we're going to start deep in the field um regardless now um so you know our, our goal was to honestly to not go a lap down um and if we did go a lap down we only wanted to go one lap down so we can hopefully fight for the lucky dog and, and stay fighting. But uh, after the green flag dropped, I was able to pick off, you know, a handful of cars right off the first 10, 15 laps. And we never really put ourselves in jeopardy of going a lap down. Um, and then my, my crew chief and um, his father-in-law, they, they, they've really taken me under their wing and, they helped me a lot, and I actually work out of their shop. Uh, they made a great strategy to, to pit early, um, give us some track position when everybody else pit, and that's exactly what happened. And we just are we're, we're praying that the car and, and the tires would stay under us long enough, and uh, that's exactly what happened after the tires leveled off with the guys that pitted behind us. We were, we were just as strong as anybody else on the racetrack. Well, great job, Jesse. Congratulations. And for folks that might be wondering, they'll actually be able to see this race on an upcoming episode of Short Track America on MAV TV, probably in September or October. Again, congratulations, Jesse. That's a big one for you. Yeah, thank you very much. And, and thanks for having me. All right. Jesse Swift's for winner at White Mountain. When we come back, we're going to talk to another winner from this past weekend. That's John Bowles. HMS Motorsport is the leader in motorsport safety, providing the most advanced driver safety products to NASCAR, IndyCar, Sprint Cars, and Sports Cars drivers. From grassroots to professional racers, HMS Motorsport has over 25 years experience outfitting drivers with the best gear on the market. Equipped with first-hand product knowledge, our experts are ready to help you select the best harness belts, seats, head restraints, helmets, and racing attire for your type of racing. HMS is even the exclusive importer for Schrode belts, Schubert helmets, and Valero base layers. Visit one of our stores in Mooresville, North Carolina, or Danvers, Massachusetts. Or check us online at hmsmotorsport.com where you can learn the details of our products and order online. Safety starts here. What creates a winning combination? Quality, focus, discipline, and most importantly, speed. At Pepperjack Kennels, we provide exceptional water and land training services for hardworking retrievers. From leading in the field to leading on the track, together we establish winning dogs and a winning team. 
Devoted to retrievers and motorsports, we are Pepper Jack Kennels. Visit us online to learn more. Ready to take your brand to the next level? At Victory Lane Design, we can help. If you are looking for a professional website, cutting edge logo, a hero card that separates you from the pack, or video production to keep you connected with your fans, then check out VictoryLaneDesign.com, where winning counts. One of racing's crown jewels, the 50th annual Oxford 250, returns to Oxford Plains Speedway with three big days of racing, August 25th through the 27th. See North America's best short trackers battle for a chance at $50,000 on Sunday, August 27th. Plus, racing for the ACT late models, New England Super Modifieds, and more. It's the 50th annual Oxford 250, August 25th through the 27th. And you can see it all on Racing America. Great to have you back here with us on the Bull Ring, presented by SRI. Alan Beach, Jess Ballard here with you this afternoon. And, you know, Jess, we get to watch racing all the time here on Race to America. It's so great. And hope the fans get to, to <laughs> do it as well, obviously. But they're guys that we follow regularly, you know, and in this case, through Montgomery and Pensacola and places like that. And that is John Bolin, who was the winner of the second twin at Montgomery this past weekend, the Show Me the Money Pro Late Model Series. John, congratulations. I, I know it's been a long time uh, coming to get back to Victory Lane. Oh, yeah, appreciate it. It's uh, definitely tough these days. You know, like I said, over the years, it's like competition it just gets tougher and tougher. And instead of like five cars that can win, there'll be 10, 15 that can win on a given night. And you've gotten tougher and tougher. I mean, your the super late model program the last couple of years has has gotten a lot stronger. You've always had a strong pro late model program. And to go there to Montgomery and beat Augie Grill and Hunter Robbins, uh, I mean that that's not an easy task. How were you able to do it? Oh yeah, that's definitely uh like I said, if you're gonna win that was a statement win that was uh everybody's dug deep and uh it's uh, dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's. It's, uh, like I said, Hunter's been racing there, and so has Augie as long as I have. I mean, probably combined, there's probably not many people have any more laps than us three around that place. So definitely a uh, heads up, just uh, winning is uh, means a lot to all the guys and all the hard work that they're putting in. Yeah, and we were talking earlier about how you're absolutely right. The, the stars kind of have to align for a late model win these days because the competition is so tight all across the country but i'd argue you know specifically in that neck of the woods pensacola montgomery i mean you got the best of the best down there in florida alabama um so that is certainly a statement win and i gotta say i've never been to montgomery when i haven't been just miserably hot like just <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, uh, just like the air is thick and so to race in those conditions is honestly very impressive as well was that I, I assume it was hot this weekend oh yeah it, it was very hot um like i said it's probably one of the hotter weekends it's about like being in Pensacola a couple weeks for the super double i mean it was it was hot down there it's just the air's thick and uh like i said you had to make sure you kept yourself in shape knowing you had to run both races Listen, John weighed 250 pounds before that race, and look at him now. <laughs> no, I'm just, yeah, I'm just kidding. Um, I know uh, Mobile's got a big pro late model race coming up here in a few weeks. Are you going to try to get down there for that one? What's the rest of the season looking like for you? Well, we're going to go to the fairgrounds this weekend in Nashville. I'm running the crate race up there, and uh, then we uh, – uh, and after that, uh, Pensacola's got a great race. I think two more weeks after that, towards the end of the month, and I think that's the weekend they're running Saturday night at Mobile. Mm -hmm. So everything goes good Friday night. We uh, talked about just going over Mobile. We used to do that a lot back in the day with Supers. We'd run Friday night there and then go Mobile Saturday night. So definitely something we're considering since we'll be that close. How about the Super? Uh, what's What's left on the schedule for you? uh right now we know we'll run the double header in september um not sure where we'll be at for uh 
uh, we talked about going to Cordell, but I don't know if Tony and everybody had the car ready after uh, gotten that big pile up at Pensacola. So uh, we'll see where we're at on it. But right now, for sure, the we're going to run the doubleheader at Pensacola and might look at running the All-American, depending on how we feel like our notes and everything go after this weekend. Well, congratulations, man. I was really excited to see uh, to see that you had won that race, and uh, I hope you'll get a few more this year. Oh, yeah. Like I said, I, think, I appreciate it. And, uh, like I said, I think we really have uh, turned the page and uh, started to make some strides at it. And just keep keep digging and uh, don't get behind. That's right. That's right. All right, that's John Bowling, your winner at Montgomery this past weekend. When we come back, we'll tell you where we will be at Racing America. Welcome to Race Face Digital Collectible Cards. Are you a driver or a team looking to expand your brand? Want to connect with your fans, give sponsors more exposure, and earn income from all card sales? Then Race Face Digital has you covered. Digitize your brand with five different collectible cards. Enrollment is now open to all drivers and all series. Visit racefacedigital.com today and use invite code RA1. SRI Performance and Stock Car Steel are your all-inclusive motorsports warehouses with more than 450 product lines. They have everything to put you in victory lane, from professional racing to street performance. SRI and Stock Car Steel have you covered with leading brands as well as a large selection of steel, aluminum, and plastics. With locations in North Carolina and Indiana, access has never been easier. SRI has the world's largest inventory of used parts. SRI Performance in Stock Car Steel and Aluminum, your one-stop shops for everything racing. Communication is key in the racing world. When it comes to at-the-track communications, there is only one place to call. Racing Electronics is the number one source for professional race communications worldwide. Over 20 years in the business proves their dedication to the sport. With every driver and crew communication, two-way radios and headsets, scanners and more, Racing Electronics is a one-stop communication source for all your motorsports needs. Before the green flag flies, make sure you have all your team communication gear from Racing Electronics. Stop by and see a Racing Electronics representative at the track near you. Visit their showroom in Concord, North Carolina, or order online at racingelectronics.com. Get up on your feet, race fans! Can you believe it? Right now, racing, in my opinion, is as healthy as it's been in the last 15 to 20 years. Just wanted to make that first lap. Go! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Bull Ring, and we're going to have another great weekend of short track racing on tap, and it all starts Thursday night at State Park Speedway up in Wisconsin. They do their Thursday night thing, and it's going to be corn night. Corn night? Yeah. What, do we have any other additional information? It's just it's corn hole, corn on <laughs> it's cob. Got, it's got something fried corn, you know, who knows, popcorn. That sounds good. You We're yeah. getting into festival season. Yeah, we'll tune in Thursday night, and you'll be able to see super late models and figure out why it's corn night. Then uh, Report once, back. Yeah, you can recover from that Friday night and come back and join us on Saturday at Anderson Speedway in Indiana, big CRA street stock, which... Uh, the CRA street stocks at Anderson are always very cool and our friends at Divorce Compact Touring Series, which, you know, you could talk to Dan Redman and get in a car. I know. So you need to Well, he's been asking that. about Travis, but... Well, forget that. Yeah, at this point. Yeah. Uh, the Reveal the Hammer Outlaw Super Late Models will be at Birch Run Speedway Racing for $5,000 up in Michigan. Mobile International Speedway continuing a, a strong finish to this season. Sportsman cars racing for 2000 to win. And that sportsman division at Mobile and Pensacola is very, it's very good. Very, yeah, really exciting racing. Yeah. Uh, Nashville Fairground Speedway, uh, they'll be in action also with their local divisions. The APC United uh, Late Models and the Quick Wick Super Stocks will be at Sunset Speedway up in Ontario. Uh, we'll also be at Oxford Plains Speedway. 
and of course uh, for their super late model and regular action and then we wind it all down sunday afternoon pro late models in action at slinger speedway is their season we're at that point in the year um we're getting into starting to wind down at some tracks yeah championships and yep wow that happened fast it did happen fast guess what uh when we come back we're gonna wrap up the show yes but we're gonna talk to heather debo about a brand new show coming here to race in america that will debut thursday morning stay tuned and we'll talk to her and tell you what that's all about Ready to take your brand to the next level? At Victory Lane Design, we can help. If you are looking for a professional website, cutting edge logo, a hero card that separates you from the pack, or video production to keep you connected with your fans, then check out VictoryLaneDesign.com where winning counts. SRI Performance and Stock Car Steel are your all-inclusive motorsports warehouses with more than 450 product lines. They have everything to put you in victory lane, from professional racing to street performance. SRI and Stock Car Steel have you covered with leading brands as well as a large selection of steel, aluminum, and plastics. With locations in North Carolina and Indiana, access has never been easier. SRI has the world's largest inventory of used parts. SRI Performance in Stock Car Steel and Aluminum, your one-stop shops for everything racing. Well, the white flag is out, and usually, yes, that means we yammer for a minute or two, mm -hmm. really about nothing, just to fill time. But, you know, the Mics Are Hot podcast with Caitlin Vincey and Heather, I'm still learning this, Heather I am so excited for this. Debuts on Racing America Thursday at 9 a.m. And joining us now is Heather Debo to tell us about that. And Heather, it's uh, it's great to see you. And soon we'll get to see you and Caitlin. And I'll have my my two K and N East Pit reporter proteges from ten years ago on. Exactly. I was just thinking about that today. How long has it been it was about since 10, we worked together? It was about 10 years ago and you looked the same and um, oh, I look you. like I got hit by a truck. <laughs> no, you don't. Yes, you, look, do. you look wonderful. Did he well, have hair you. back then? M maybe a uh, little. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, maybe a little bit maybe more. A little. Now he's got that clean clothes shave on Yeah, top. that's right. I did that on purpose. <laughs> so tell me about this. What are you girls, what are you ladies going to be talking doing? about? Yeah. So Mics Are Hot is our uh, podcast that's coming out and we are so excited about it. So as you already mentioned, Caitlin and I, we actually used to work together when Speed Channel was still a thing. Mm -hmm. That's how we first met. So for a long time, we've really wanted to come back together and do something. And Caitlin had this idea about doing a podcast and she asked me if I wanted to be a part of it. And so we kind of pitched some ideas around to some different people and here we are. But um, Caitlin's busy doing a truck media day as we're talking right now. So that's why she couldn't be here to talk with us. But uh, it's going to be a really fun podcast to do, like kind of laid back, but also we'll still hit on all the topics that everybody wants to know about. But we're going to have fun with it and be able to show um, some personality, not only to ourselves, but to the guests that we will have on as well. Maybe a little wine. 
I mean, maybe you never know. Like, why not? Why not? Right. <laughs> I know this is something that I feel like maybe is a foreign concept to Alan, but like, yeah. I love to start my mornings listening to a plethora of podcasts that are just two ladies chilling and, you know, giving their opinions on whatever, a plethora of different topics. And like, I just love that genre. And so when I, when I learned about this, I was like, oh, this is going to be great. Then I learned who was going to be doing it. I'm like, oh, two great, per like the perfect personalities for this. And then I got to say, I don't know who came up with the name, but that is a perfect name for this podcast. Yeah, it's so, oh, there's a lot to unpack there, but thank you so much for being excited for us because we're really excited. And Caitlin and I, like I said, we've been friends forever. So you guys are going to see our personalities and our friendship come out. So I'm apologizing in advance. Uh, but as far as the title of the show, Mics Are Hot, uh, we want to talk about what we do as journalists. As she, Obviously, she's a host on NASCAR Race Hub. I do pit reporting. So we want to give a behind the scenes look at what we go through in and out of every show or day or race that we're at. Um, but when you are on a broadcast, and specifically I was thinking about uh, when I've done shows for PRN radio, when we come back from commercial break, they say, mics are hot. It's kind of like, hey, let's get ready. We're going on the air. Don't let's say do something that'll get you in trouble. Exactly, <laughs> because <laughs> mics are always hot. Even when it's they're true. not technically hot, they are hot. So it's uh, yeah, and somebody we'll give should our little hot takes. <laughs> somebody should tell us that whenever we're between segments, right? They should. David. Well, Heather, Heather, we're excited about it. It's the Mics Are Hot podcast with Caitlin Vincy and Heather DeBeau. You can catch it starting tomorrow on Racing America, 9 a.m., and we can't wait to see it. I appreciate you joining us, Heather. Thanks for having me, and I'm excited to be a part of Racing America and hope everybody enjoys the podcast. Oh, we will. We will. Thanks again. And with that, for Jess Ballard, I'm Alan Beats. I want to thank all of our guests, and we'll see you next week here on The Bulldogs.